Greetings and salutations. Let's get this thing started. All right, so to give you a little bit of background, the reason why I even wrote this article is because I use this method uh, multiple times. Uh, several times I've gotten from clients that they want to make some adjustments on static HTML sites. Yep, believe it or not, static HTML sites are still out there. Uh, and I didn't want to have to adjust like something in the header for every freaking page, especially if there's like seven pages every single time. I wanted to do it in one place and update everything. So using Pug from another, uh, uh, from Node, I knew that I could use it for HTML, like regular HTML. You just had to do a little bit of Webpack stuff. Alright, cool story. So, preamble, Jim Carrey GIFs. This is what we're going to need in order to be successful in this. You need to know a little bit about JavaScript, um, you know, the syntax, I mean, you're just going to be copying whatever I'm doing, but it helps if you know what you're doing. Uh, a little bit of HTML, because, you know, if you don't know that, you shouldn't be writing websites, I guess. Uh, CSS, because, you know, who likes ugly things. You don't have to be familiar with Pug, because I'm going to explain, hopefully, enough of it to get your hands dirty. I don't know, npm, uh, command line, I do everything from the command line. If you want to do it some other way, go ahead, but, you know, that's on you. And then, of course, who Jim Carrey is. Uh, these are the versions, and then let's just get right into it, shall we? Okay, so. <clears throat> I created a... A folder and where I'm going to be doing all this called a pug life because why not and we need to set up our structure and you'll see it over here too so what I like to do is I like to have a source folder where I'm going to have all my files on my pug files if I'm going to be doing uh, JavaScript in there so let's do that let's make dir make dir a source file good job source file Handy dandy little icon, VS Code is telling me that's my source file. Okay, now let's make a dist folder. A distribution, distributed, I don't freaking know what it stands for, but we're going to make a dist folder. That's where everything's going to end up. Then you can serve everything from that folder. And then um, we need to make a webpack dot config dot js file and that's how we're going to control our webpack all right so to get this started let's do a little npm hold on this is a sweet gif yes okay <laughs> sorry uh npm init dash y and that's just going to answer all the questions for us we have to freaking answer them if you want to answer them, go ahead. Whatever. <laughs> okay, and then we need to install some dependencies. Uh, there's a bunch of dependencies in here. I'm just going to copy it from the article. You can do the same. So, what we're doing is npm install as a dev dependency uh, webpack, webpack CLI, so we can do command line stuff. Pug HTML loader. HTML Webpack plugin and then HTML loader. Do, 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 do. Wow, that took a long time. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to figure out why that took so long later, but whatever. <laughs> Alright, so when you do the npm init, it creates a package.json file for you. And there's a stupid script in here. I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'm going to paste these two in here. From... <clears throat> okay. So the first one, my dev one, I'm going to run webpack. We're going to watch file changes, so it automatically reloads. And we're going to do mode development. And then for my uh, bleh, production, so I ship clean code, webpack mode production. It changes a bunch of stuff. Uh, you can check the documents if you want. And you can also set it up depending on which mode it's in. But that's another topic for another day. All right. 
Uh, so that's it for that. All right, so now we need a couple of starter files. So you see we have these source folder. So we need two things. We need a app.js uh, because everything in Webpack is compiled using JavaScript. So this is essentially going to be our our file that's going to handle uh, like CSS or our JavaScript or whatever else we want to pump through it. So it needs an entry point, and that's going to be that entry point. And we also need an index.pug to get us started. All right, close those. Now, we already created our webpack.config.js, so let's start typing away in it. So we need to include some things. We need to include path equals choir path. And we need to include webpack. Which, to be honest, I'm actually not sure if you need to, but I had it in the docs, so I'm just going to leave it that way. <laughs> And then HTML webpack plugin equals require the longest freaking name in existence for a freaking package. Oh my god. And, and uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> so path is native node dependency just allows you to grab paths, etc. You will need that. HTML Webpack plugin, that's how we extract our HTML from our document. And I'll explain that hopefully in a little bit. Okay, now we need to set up our loaders. So we're going to make a pug loader. I mean, I like to do it this way because Wes Boss showed me and it's pretty freaking awesome. So I'm gonna just copy some file or copy some information from the article. Okay, so this is our pug loader and this is what it's gonna do. It's gonna test for pug files and when it recognizes the pug file, it's going to load that file first using the pug HTML loader and then extracting HTML from that with attributes set to false, which I'll explain in a little bit. Okay, and then next we need to do our config. Every webpack config needs a config, so let's do that. Like I said, we need to have an entry point. And that is going to be app.js. And then we need an output. And our output is going to be using our handy dandy path, path.resolve, double underscore dir name into the folder of dist. File name, put a name on there. And these little brackets just, oops, don't need that comma. These little brackets just give it uh, the name of whatever it's coming from. Okay, so plugins. So this is where we're going to talk about. Oh, sorry, not plugins yet. My bad. Okay, module first. So our modules are like sections of Webpack that we can configure individually, i.e., in this case, Pug. But that's where you're going to do like your styles or your SAS or whatever, you know, JavaScript, all that stuff. So the first module, or we're gonna make some rules. This is gonna be an array, and we're gonna put pug in there. So we could write all this stuff out and put it in here, but it's much nicer to extract it into a variable and then plug it in there. Thank you, Wes Boss. All right. Comma, now we go into our plugins. So this is where the magic happens with our pug files. So we're going to do a new HTML Webpack plugin. This is a function and takes some parameters. The first one is a file name, and that's going to be index.html. 
and our template. Template is that file that we created, source index.pug. Cool. Then inject false. I don't remember why. I know there was a reason. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but it needs to be in there. And then finally, let's export it, because if not, you will get an error. Boom. Webpack config, all done. So, just to review, uh, we got path defined by node, or it's a variable that's allowed from node, brought in from node, whatever. Webpack, how we're going to handle our HTML. We got our pug uh, loader, looks for pug files, loads them this way. We've got our config, our source, output, module, plugins. Cool. So, this is going to take in the template, whatever is in source index.pug, spit out an index into HTML into dist. And you'll see that in a second. All right, so I think we are ready for the maiden voyage, npm run dev. That's that script. Webpack watch mode development. Success! And it's telling us that it created a main, dot, main bundle JS and an index.html file, and it put it into our dist folder. Sweet! Awesome. Now, let's actually do some cool stuff. So, the whole point of this entire thing was to break everything up into partials, kind of like you do in PHP. So you can have, like, static footer, static header, all this fun stuff. Uh, and not have to rewrite it on every freaking page. So let's set that up. Alright, so our index.pug. The first thing we want to do, actually, um, inside our source folder, create a new file, call it layout dot pug. Now this layout is going to essentially be mm, like the whole structure, right? So like it's going to consist of everything. It's the outer structure where you're going to input dynamic content. Yeah. So think of it like this will be the entire page with dynamic content shoved in and out of it at need be. I don't know if that makes sense, but we'll figure it out. So the first thing you want to do is let me see if this works. Nope. It was working earlier. For some reason my Emmet's broken. Um so hello pug. Alright, so let's talk about some things. How pug is set up is that it uses traditional, you know, HTML tags, HTML, head, body, script, all this stuff, but it does it based on indentation. You may notice, indentation. That's how you signify that it's nested. And there's no closing tags, which means you get much cleaner code, and it's freaking amazing. Okay. So in addition to that stuff, um, there's also this thing that's called blocks, and this block is what you know, that's where the magic happens. Header magic happens here. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, not going to work, but... Sorry. <laughs> uh, these are going to be our partials. So this is our main layout. Now let's do something fancy, okay? First thing we're going to do, our index.pug. First thing we have to do is extends layout. That tells this file that it's going to use everything from here in here. And then to get access to these individual blocks. So let's do this real fast. I'm going to run up, or I'm going to spin up a server real fast so you can see what I'm talking about. So in our dist folder, this is where it's being 
extracted. This is our file. And as you can see, I mean, it's <laughs> all it has in it right now is I'm a title. <laughs> Pretty exciting. <laughs> However, If I do this, block content, h1, I'm a header, pug life. Now we see that. I'm a header, pug life. Sweet. So now we know how to deal with dynamic content. So I'm going to do a little bit more to show you some other things you can do with it before we move into trying to recreate a website. All right. So let's see what we got here. So there's another thing. Um, we can do in include. So we'll go into our source, uh, source folder. We'll make an includes folder. And then inside that includes, we're going to make a new file. We're going to call it header.pug. And then go back to our layout. Go back to our header, block header, include, includes, slash, header. So that's just, that's just, you know, a way of including files into other files. So then I can do whatever I want inside this header and it's going to show up appropriately. I mean, that's so that's like pretty much everything you need to know to get started. I mean, the rest of the docs, you know, I would just check out the docs uh, to figure out everything else that you can do with it. Probably should have loaded this beforehand. <laughs> but uh, if you're interested, you can stick around and I'm going to attempt to get this freaking page that I stole from the internet onto this other one. So check out their docs, and if not, uh, follow. Let's let's do this together. Um, I guarantee you, it's probably gonna take a while, and I'm gonna suffer for it. Okay. So let's bring this over here. So this is the page that I stole off the internet. Um, not everything works, but you know, a lot of stuff works. And it's got two pages, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't work great because I just took the freaking files off the internet, but it sort of works. So let's try and figure out if we can get this stuff together so that something like the header I can do in one place, and if I need to adjust it, I can. All right, so moving back over here, First thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to bring in some stuff. Um, first of all, I need the CSS, right? <laughs> I need... Let's make a new folder over here. CSS. And then this is these are all the folders. Actually, you know what? To make this easy, I'm just going to take... This is probably going to get kind of confusing because there's two dist folders, but um, I'm going to move that one to a different spot. So bear with me for a second. This is just so I don't have to relink all the freaking CSS and stuff. Okay. So all of their freaking CSS and crap is in here. Obviously, that's not really how you want to do it, but 
for the sake of this tutorial, let's do it that way. Okay. So I don't care about what's going on in there anymore. What I gotta do is I gotta open up this index.html file. Whoops, that's definitely not what I wanted to do. In fact, I didn't even know you could do that. That's pretty sweet. Okay. <laughs> I want to split screen. Eh. The computer is not liking running all these things at once. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is let's get all the stuff from the header into there. So I'll scroll down. And one of the benefits of doing it this way is that it like chunks everything out so it makes debugging a lot easier. All right, so that's our header. Now if we go back to our title page. Oop, got an error. Rerun that. Okay, so now we cleaned up the header. Oops. Now you see that it's popping it over here. Now obviously, <laughs> this is not the style that they had, so let's do that next. So, basically everything in the head, let's grab that. And let's bring it over to our layout.pug. Now I can guarantee you that this is not going to work right the first time because there's all kinds of shit in there that it doesn't like. So let's scroll up. First thing we want to do, get rid of all the indentation and then indent one. So the first thing has got to go is all these. But we're still going to have errors. Guarantee it. Uh, let's see. So the next thing we got to do is fix these scripts. So the easy way to do that is turn it into the right pug tag, put a period on it, make sure it's indented correctly. Boom. And also get rid of these comments. Again, let's 
script tags are a pain in the ass. Oops. Indent that over. I mean, this is like, oh, period. Basically, a period means that it's like, it, it includes everything in this, I guess. I don't know. Uh, let's tab that over. That shouldn't cause a problem. Okay. So let's rerun that. Still, still an error. So now it's yelling at me on page, I mean on line 66. Yep, still doesn't like this shit. Um, for the time being, I'm just gonna comment that out. <laughs> tag it's not I'm not sure exactly why it's failing but it is I'm just gonna comment this out too what the fuck So now we got all these styles in there, which is good. So we got the header. And now let's just grab the rest of his content. For the index page. So instead of doing this, I'll paste that all in there. But of course, as you remember, things are going to be all messed up. Get rid of all the indent, indent one time, and then save. But I know this isn't going to work because it's yelling at me because of this. So whenever stuff gets copied in, uh, usually. For whatever reason, sometimes it'll come in a multi-line, and then this thinks that this is a tag. So anytime that this exists in here, <laughs> I'm just gonna fix that. And same for the sizes. There. And then of course the comments. Comment those out. Should be all's well again. <laughs> and voila. We have his page with his styles. Now, now that we have this page done, let's go ahead and close that out. Let's open up the... Let's not yell at it. Oh wait, no. It's about. Open this up. Close that out. 
and then make a new file. Oops, not here. In our source source folder, about dot pug, and then again extends layout block content. And for right now, I'm just gonna do h1. Pug life, like pug liger. <laughs> All right, now this isn't gonna know that it needs to grab it. We have to tell it. So we have to go back over here, where this thing is plugged in. Copy, paste. Make sure you put a period. Change index to about, and then magically. After we, so anytime you change the webpack config, you gotta stop it and then restart it because it doesn't know. Just FYI. And now it should spit out two files. You may have been screaming at me for the last time of minutes, but uh, file name. These are the joys of development. Okay. <laughs> so now we have two. We have an about page and we have a home page. <laughs> wow. So, like I said, if you wanted to like do something stupid like check me out. As soon as that recompiles, on the home page and on the about page. Pretty cool. Uh, this is especially handy for stuff like styles, because I mean, I put all those styles in there, I don't have to change it every single time or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So, thanks for hanging out. Uh, and watching me fail at writing file name. Hope you had a good time. Bye!